So if somebody comes and makes a better electric car that, than, than Tesla and, and we go bankrupt, I still think that's a good thing for the world. These are the words of the guy who owns some of the most innovative companies of the iPhone, vape, TikTok, crypto, scooter, human life era as we know it. The entrepreneur known to turn anything it touches into gold, except for maybe Twitter and Hyperloop, strongly believes that patents should be open sourced in order for the entire world to benefit from it. And this theory is about to be tested in the real world. As you might already know, the US electronic vehicle market is currently being dominated heavily by Tesla. One fundamental reason to that is the supercharging stations. Frequent, efficient, reliable, and also exclusive. The big news is the company has decided to offer access to all the other US car manufacturers. But why? What does this all mean to Tesla? To the EV market in general? Why is this such of a big deal? Well, the world as we know it is about to receive a significant change. Welcome to another episode of Blank Note. Combustion engines come with a built-in commodity that we take for granted. Gas. You know, gas is gas. With the exception of the type, every old school car out there fuels the same way. Empty tank, full tank. Go to the gas station, pump some money in, pump some gas out. Easy like that. But EVs are a completely new front, by all means. Major part of the reason they haven't picked up yet is charging. Charging time alone is a big issue. A full battery charge can take anywhere from 40 minutes to complete hours, unless you do a quick charge, which, at the best scenario, would fall somewhere in the 20 minutes range, but then again, be limited to 80% of battery capacity. And also, this kind of applies to the more high-end spectrum of the market, the pricey cars. Then there are the two less quick charging practices like level 1 home charging, which can take up to 12 hours for a full charge, or level 2, which can go up to 6 or 10 hours. Bottom line, this comes down to our engineering capabilities as a generation, so we leave it to science. Now, the human factor in play has a little bit to do with choices rather than science level. Plugs. You know how if you travel from US to EU, your iPhone charger doesn't fit in a socket? That is kind of where the EV charging sector is right now. Different companies have different versions of plug and socket pairs. The two most common ones in North America are Tesla's North American charging standard and combined charging standard that nearly everybody else uses. Imagine running low on juice. You look for the closest charging station. Which, by the way, the more remote you are, the harder it is to find. Then you finally get there and your plug won't fit. In November 2022, the biggest EV car maker in the country announced it was going to open the charging design to the world, giving this way access to other car makers too. In the blog post, they claim superiority in terms of stations, quote, the most common charging standard by a degree of 2 to 1. Checks out! There are 17,000 Tesla supercharging stations in the country, compared to 11,000 CCS. Now, most of EV charge will of course still happen at home, at level 1. But on the road charging will absolutely be a better experience now for more EVs, not only Teslas. But why? Does more charging mean more money for the company? Not really. Tesla makes money from software, services and car units. Charging sector is not a big deal. So, is this out of pure environmentalist idealistic love? Hmm. That same year, the Biden administration passed a law that aims to help boost EV adoption and grow charging infrastructure. But the funding would only go to companies that build charging stations that can accommodate more than one company's EVs, disqualifying Tesla from receiving these funds. Unless it can convince at least one other automaker to adopt its plug. So, maybe Dutchcoin daddy wanted some of that good old gov money? At first, it was thought that competition wouldn't bite. But, as it turned out, Tesla hit it big. None else but giants like Ford and GM have now signed deals with Tesla to give them access to supercharging stations. And this will not only apply to the new NACS equipped cars, but also current ones with the help of an adapter. Just like the war of the currents between Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla nearly a century and a half ago, Tesla wins again. Maybe the company is not gonna make tons of money from this move, 
but in terms of promo, brand recognition, and market power, it will solidify its position as a leader. But what does all of this mean for us, the consumers? Well, it won't happen overnight, but this is definitely one step closer to electrifying all the cars out there. The days of the classic gas station are numbered. That cowboy hard smell of gasoline under a rusty stand on the side of the road will be replaced by sleepy humming units of chargers outside of a shopping mall. It's coming. Car makers are working hand to hand. The world agreed to get rid of gas and new solid state batteries are under development. You know, the world evolving. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate it very much. Hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one.